Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel called Living in Hayward. I'm Audrey Miller. I am the broker owner of Northwest Wisconsin Realty Team. And in this video, we're going to discuss the many lakes in the great area of Hayward, Wisconsin. And when you're searching for property, what lake size do you want? What are the pros and cons of certain lakes? And just an informational video about the lakes themselves. So I'm gonna start with what I like to call the tier one lakes. And this is how I describe it to buyers who are you know, calling me and saying, I have no idea what lake I wanna be on. I know I wanna be on the water. I just don't know much about the lakes. And how can you guide me? So this is just giving you kind of an overview. The tier one lakes are quite large. So they would be 3000 acres or more in our specific area and they'll have really great water clarity, usually spring fed, great fishing, and just the size itself makes them full recreational lakes. So you can do tubing, water skiing, all those kinds of things, and still have lots of room for pontooning or fishing or find quiet areas on the lake, um, you know, where you can kind of just hang out and do whatever you want. And obviously the swimming is great as well. The shorelines are typically really nice, uh, clear water, and kind of all the things that people are looking for, but they do come with a price tag and we'll get to that in a little bit. Also, if you like my channel, please remember to like or subscribe and follow along for other videos in the future. So the tier one lakes, we have Round Lake would be the first one I would mention. That's located about 10 to 15 minutes east of Hayward. It's around uh, between 3,000 and 3,200 acres great water clarity, you know, all the items that I mentioned that make it a premier lake in the area. And then there is Le Couture. And now one unique thing about Le Couture, besides the fact that it is the largest spring fed lake in the area at about 51 or 5,200 acres, it also has access to one of the other premier lakes, which is Grindstone. So if you're on Le Couture, you can also access grindstone for additional uh, an additional 3,000 acres of you know lake and great fishing there from what I hear. I'm not a fisher person, but I <laughs> hear things having lived in the area for 35 plus years. So I understand there's, there's quite uh, good fishing on grindstone. But let me explain a little bit about the connection between the two lakes. There, it's a channel that goes underneath Highway K. There's a bridge on top of it. So it depends on water levels in terms of how well you're able to access one lake from the other, whether you're heading from Grindstone into Le Couture or vice versa. A lot of times you can get through there with a fishing boat, um, but often the water is too shallow for any kind of inboard motor or a, you know, a motor that you can't trim up quite a ways to get through there. And then sometimes, the water is actually too high, depending on the boat you have, like a pontoon, and you can't clear the bridge. Like you'll you'll hit you'll hit the bridge basically if you try to go through. So a lot of times a small fishing boat is navigable between the two, um, and other boats depending on the year and the water levels and that kind of thing. And from Le Couture, you can also get into Little Le Couture, which is about a 250 to 300 acre lake. And then you can also go down the Billy Boy Flowage with a pontoon or a jet ski or something like that. And that's more of like a river and a really cool nature ride. So super uh, great location for those lakes. They are located about 15 to 20 minutes from Hayward, kind of down towards Stone Lake, so south of Hayward. And again, great water clarity. Le Couture has two bars and restaurants on it. Grindstone does not have any currently but like I said, you can sometimes get between the two lakes, you know, depending on the year. And then I would mention Long Lake, which is a little bit further from Hayward, but still definitely within the area that I cover. And that's down towards Stone Lake Birchwood area. So when you head uh, from Stone Lake, you can get to the north end of Long Lake in about 10 minutes. But the south end of Long Lake um, is another 20 minutes to a half hour. But that is a wonderful body of water that has numerous bars and restaurants on it. It is a long lake, hence the name. I think it's about 15 miles long. And 
again, highly desirable. But like I mentioned, these Premier Lakes, um, because of the water clarity, the size, the fishing, the recreational sports, they are also the most highly desirable, most competitive to get on them. In fact, it's getting hard to even find vacant land to build on these lakes at all. At the moment, I think there might be one or two properties that are even on the market on any of these lakes combined. And you'll pay between 450 and 500,000, maybe even a little more for just a one acre lot on these lakes. But in the long run, I always tell people, I think lakefront property is an awesome investment because they only make so much of it. And it's just gotten uh, more and more built up over the years, but still definitely the feeling of coming to the North Woods when you come to any of the lakes in our area. Some people ask me, is it like, you know, super busy on the lakes, you know, the full recreational lakes. And I always tell them nothing like maybe what you've seen at lakes in other areas, especially Lake Minnetonka down in the Twin Cities. It's more on July 4th weekend, Memorial Day weekend, you'll have, you know, it'll get, I'll say crowded at that time, but really not. Um, you can always find peaceful spots on, on any of the big lakes and, or just tool around in your pontoon. So price point for a finished home obviously this varies quite a bit but I'll give you a range on these um, and this is for a on these tier one lakes and this is for a single family home not a condo property with shared frontage etc you would be probably looking at seven to 750 on the low end up to you know anywhere as high as 1.5 we don't have a lot of properties that sell over 1.5 in our area but between 750 and 1.1 you'll find a lot of the properties fall in that range so if you're looking for something on one of the tier one lakes that's kind of what you can expect to be paying and then tier two um let me back up a second tier 1a is the one that i want to definitely mention as well and that is the Chippewa flowage. And the reason I call it tier 1A is because it is not like anything else in the area, but it is highly desirable to a lot of people, but it has a couple of differences. One, it's a flowage, so it's man-made. It was a bunch of rivers and small lakes and the power company flooded it back in, I believe the 1930s. And now it is a 15,000 acre huge lake flowage and great fishing, lots of undeveloped shoreline. I think only about 20% of the 225 miles of shoreline is developed. So lots and lots of nature, cruising on a pontoon, lots of little bays for fishing, 15 bars and restaurants on that lake. That is located about half an hour, maybe 20 minutes to a half hour east of Hayward. And some people only want to be on the Chippewa flowage. What it doesn't have is the clear, clear water of the tier one lakes. Kind of has a brownish tinge to it. Some shorelines are really sandy, beautiful, clear water. Some shorelines can be a little bit mucky. So there's a little bit of a mix there. Definitely a one of a kind. So I call that one 1A. And these are obviously just my opinions on the different tiers of lakes, but it's based on lots and lots of conversations with buyers and seeing what sells for the higher prices, what is more desirable, what people are looking for. So I, I feel it's pretty accurate, but it is my opinion from, <laughs> from my experiences working in an agent in this area. So tier two would be the really clear, clean lakes that are just a little bit smaller. They're still full recreational. They just don't have the acreage component. Um, beautiful shorelines, very highly desirable but more 800 to 1,000 acres. Um, so that would be Sand Lake, Whitefish Lake, Stone Lake, and Sisabagama. Those are all in the Stone Lake area and all kind of in that, Stone Lake is the smallest, but also one of the very clearest lakes in the state. And that's, I think, 523 acres. The other three are all within 100 or so acres of each other in size. A couple of them have like one bar and restaurant on them, Whitefish and Sisabagama. The other two 
uh, sand and stone do not. And then I would also put Nelson Lake in the tier two category, just simply because the location is great, just a little bit north of Hayward. It's a good size, um, around 2,500 acres. And good fishing just doesn't quite have the water clarity again because it is a flowage and you can definitely run into a mixed bag of frontage conditions on Nelson Lake. So you kind of have to look at it property by property. And then the tier three lakes I'm going to describe as also the quiet lakes. So these are some really nice, desirable lakes that are a little more in the boonies, I will say, east of Hayward. They are Lost Land Lake, Spider Lake, Teal Lake, and Ghost Lake. And actually, if you Google quiet lakes, it'll tell you all about them. So they tend to have restrictions on speeds, restrictions on time of day that you can do water sports like tubing or jet skiing. Some of them don't allow it at all. And this is more for the nature lover, people who want to fish, kayak, uh, canoe, those types of things, more interested in pontooning is fine as well. More the quieter, quieter sports instead of the, you know, the recreational. So those are all um, good sized lakes around a thousand acres, give or take other than ghost, which is uh, quite a bit smaller. And again, very desirable depending what you're looking for. So I'm just trying to give you kind of the scope of this and tier two and tier three are similar priced. You would be expecting to pay somewhere between 450 and maybe 850 or 900,000 for a finished house on these lakes. If lots come up on these lakes, they would be more in the two to $300,000 range. And this is only a sampling. These are kind of the lakes that are most often requested by buyers, most talked about, but there are lots of other lakes. So moving on to tier four would be all the rest of the lakes in the area. And I cover an area that goes the whole way over to Winter, down towards Birchwood, over to Minong and Trigo, up past Cable to the north. And we have lots and lots of lakes that are between two and 600 acres, varying water quality, varying price points. Um, but I do tell people, this is filmed in January of 2024, to get on a lake at all with a single family home, you can expect to pay a minimum of 300,000 and on up from there. So that's kind of the overview of the lakes in the area. There are too many to mention all of them, but this kind of gives you the, the main ones that people ask about a lot, the kind of the premier lakes kind of in order. And then I do want to mention also a couple of lakes up by Cable because there are two lakes up there that are um, highly desirable, Lake Namakagan and Lake Owen. Both are a good size, great water clarity, and a lot of people want to be on those lakes as well. And that's going to be about 30 to 40 minutes from Hayward. The Cable area is really known for the bike trails, ski trails, those types of outdoor recreation as well. So the convergence of that makes those lakes quite desirable as well. well. I hope you learned something from this video. Again, like, subscribe to hear more videos and contact me if you have any questions or are looking to buy or sell. I'm happy to help uh, be your real estate expert in and around the Hayward area.